Hey look, a Dungeons and Dragons ride. Fear not, ranger, barbarian, magician, thief, cavalier and acrobat. I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Friday show from the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today we're going to take a look at Dungeons and Dragons, the animated TV series, series one. Oh yes, look at this bad boy. This is the box set. This is the complete TV series. They made three series way back in 1983 and I think the last series was aired in 1985. Now, those of you that don't know, and you probably do know, because you're watching a fantasy channel, it's Dungeon Dragons. And Dungeon Dragons is a role-playing game. It started out in 1974 and was created by Gary Gyax and Dave Arneson. And it's basically where you take on the persona of a fantasy character and then you get up to all sorts of scrapes in quests and adventures, your tasks to do. And so this is based on the role-playing game. Now, I watched this as a kid and it, it just had a huge impact on me, I guess as a person, because there are morals and lessons to learn in there, but also kind of as a writer, I think, and as a world builder, I love creating worlds and creating characters. I think this had a huge influence on me. So this is hugely, hugely, I'm gonna say the word hugely more times, this had a massive, see what I did there, influence on me. Nostalgia seeped in. So the more, you know, when I became an adult, you know, you kind of forget about the stuff you watch as kids. And then it kind of comes back full circle, especially obviously DVDs. And now you've got YouTube where you've got old TV shows you used to watch, just put up. And I thought, oh, Dungeons and Dragons. Now I wanted to know, is it as good as I remember it? When you're a kid, you know, some of your filters aren't necessarily there, so you kind of watch anything. And can, like, can you be discerning? I guess you can. You kind of know what you like and what you don't like. But I wanted to know, was this as good as I remember? Well, let's find out. <laughs> what is the setup, Dungeons and Dragons? What's it all about? Well, a mysterious theme park ride throws six kids into the perilous realm of the Dungeon Master. Yes, they get on a ride, they're enjoying it, they're going, oh wow, this is amazing, lovely, look, and there's all dragons, and ah, it's all kind of make-believe, you know, it's a, it's a theme park ride, we all love those, don't we, a roller coaster. But it's also a portal into another dimension, into another land, into another realm. So these six children, get spat out at the other end, they don't know where they are, and they're transformed. They are a, and if I can remember, a ranger, there's a barbarian, there's a cavalier, there's an acrobat, a magician, a thief, and their names are Bobby, Sheila, Hank, Eric, Diana, and Presto. I don't know why his one gets changed, he's the magician. Anyway, they also have a new friend called Uni the Unicorn. See what they did there? It's this little cute little baby unicorn that takes a shine to Bobby, who is the barbarian. And they are being pursued though. Oh yes, got to have an evil villain. They're being pursued by the evil Venga. I guess that's how, I always thought, no, Venger. That's how they pronounce it, but Venga, that's how it's spelled. Just read it down there. So it's Venger. And I always, I think when I was a kid, I thought it might be vinegar. I wasn't quite sure. Anyway, he want, vinegar quite evil. If you get that in a cut, that is very evil. But, you know, why is he evil? Mm, don't really know. He just is. But he does want the weapons. He wants their magical weapons that all the kids have. They get given those by the dungeon master. And he wants the magical weapons because he can use their magic, because they're created by the Dungeon Master, they're very, very powerful. He wants to use their magic for his magic, and then he can totally dominate the land. So, the kids though, their only thought is survival. They're in a strange, mysterious land with magic and creatures, which is totally different from, I'm not sure which city they're from in America, but they're from America. And all they want to do is survive and find a portal back home. That is the overarching 
premise to all three series, not just the first series. There, but each episode, though, is a standalone episode. So you do get like a nice little story, little quest, if you like, where it all kind of gets wrapped up. So you can watch them out of order. Now, obviously, as a kid, and back in the day, there was none of this streaming malarkey, none of this box set binging. What's all that about? No, we had to wait for episodes once a week. Or if we were lucky, maybe daily. Some cartoons, they just churned out a lot of cartoons so you could watch them daily. Can't remember if this was a daily thing. But there's only 13 episodes in this series, so I think they would have put them out over 13 weeks. Now, you might have missed one, you might not have done each week, but it didn't really matter because they were all standalone. There are many themes within this, as you can imagine, within 13 episodes. So every single episode seems to have some sort of moral, some sort of lesson to learn. But they don't do it in a cheesy way. They do it in a kind of, oh, OK, that's kind of earned, I've, you know, you've earned that. The way you told the story, yeah, I'm on board with that. But I'm just going to pick out a few of the main themes that I found within several episodes, one of which is courage. Many, I was going to say many, if not all the episodes, at least one of the characters has to find their courage in order to overcome that particular obstacle, just like me trying to talk. Now, this could involve physical courage. Obviously, it's set in the realm of Dungeons & Dragons, so it's going to be, you know, there's going to be combat, there's going to be puzzles, there's going to be acrobatic feats that you have to do and you know survival so if you think back if you're you know if you get if you see a big creature coming to attack you you're going to have to be physical aren't you you're either going to have to attack the creature back for your self-defense or you're going to have to leg it you're going to have to run away which is physical or it could involve courage of a different sort courage mental courage courage that obviously comes from in here and sometimes that's particularly hard for characters depending on which character to, to actually find. So this so finding courage is easier for some characters than it is others, which is just like real life. Eric, who's one of the kids, he becomes a cavalier. And it's a beautiful twist because he's actually, he's a spo spoilt in real life, real life, in his real life, he's a spoilt brat. He's, you know, very wealthy and he's used to getting everything his own way. He's, you know, it's not mentioned, but he's probably got servants or whatever. He's just a very wealthy American family and so he has a bit of a you know inferior superior complex going on he kind of thinks he's superior above everybody else but he is a coward and it's quite ironic that he's the one that has the shield he's a cavalier and he's the one that has to protect them so again that's a nice kind of juxtaposition there nice twist so obviously for Eric you know in a lot of the episodes he's having to find his courage the other main theme that seems to run through all the episodes is friendship and teamwork. Now this theme probably does run through every single episode and probably through series two and series three as well. And I've not watched those yet because I wanted to just, you know, absorb the first series and, and do a review of that. And it seems to capture the whole ethos of the role-playing game as well. In the role-playing game, if you don't know, you, you group of mates, group of friends, or oh, watch Stranger Things, that gives you a clue as well, you know, because they play D&D &D in that as well. But Basically, D&D is a group of, group of your mates, you take on personas, you take on a character, so I might play a barbarian, and you create a backstory, and you create, you know, your character traits, and you have statistics, and then you, all of you go on a quest. Now, because you're playing, most of the time, you're playing different types of characters, one might be a barbarian, one might be the acrobat, one might be a thief, an assassin, you each have special skill sets, and so, in certain situations, you know, being a barbarian and just using brute force doesn't work. Casting magic might work. Or being a bard, you know, being a good with words, being good with songs, you know, persuading people. That might work in any situ you know, in a certain situation. So in order to be successful, they need friendship because in order for any teamwork to work, you need to have a good bond, a good friendship. Now, they've got an advantage, just like when you play D D, you know, the role-playing game. Normally, nine times out of ten, it's people that you know and your friends already. So you've already got that bond, and that's what happens. At the opening sequence, it's, oh, look, there's a ride, yay! And they're, they're all friends, and in fact, two of them are brother and sister, and they climb on together as friends. And so they're going through this, so the friendship's already there. 
but it does get tested. Obviously, events, circumstances, and characters try and you know either mischievously break up the friendship or just events happen and that tests the friendship. So you have to have teamwork and friendship in order to survive because that's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to survive and get back to their own port, you know, to find a portal to go back to their own world. So as I say, each character has a different class, such as ranger, cavalier, thief. So therefore, they have their own skill set. So that combination of, you know, and they've got magical weapons as well, and they've got their own personalities. Now remember, you know, sometimes being a coward might be the best thing to do. If you're, you know, full hardy and you've got lots of courage and you just run head on in and you don't really think about stuff, that might not be the best solution. Running away might actually be the best solution. So personalities and skill set, and in this case, magical objects, combined with that friendship, create the teamwork in order for to them to be, all of them to be successful. So it really is one for all and all for one. You know, they don't leave a man down or a woman down. If someone's, you know, in trouble, but it means that others, you know, the rest of the group might be in trouble, well then so be it. You go back, you help that person. And I guess hopefully just like real life. Survival, I've mentioned that before, that is again one of the overarching storylines that, that runs through it. They're trying to get back into their own realm, which is obviously Earth, by finding a portal. But because they're in a strange and wondrous and dangerous land full of magic and creatures where they don't really know the rules, they don't know the physics, you know, somehow magic, you know, characters can cast plasma bolts or change people into something else. They don't know the physics of the world, they don't know the rules. So their main concern is finding their way back home is to do with survival. They're trying to navigate through all this new physics, all this magic, new personalities. And remember, these are kids. So I, th I, I think the youngest is eight. I think Bob is actually eight or nine, right up to Hank, who's the leader of the group. He's probably about 15, 16, maybe older. He might even be 18. So there's a big spectrum there of ages. And so that's a really good metaphor for life. You know, that's your teenage years. That's where you're transforming from a child into an adult or, or learning more about the adult world. So for them, there's lots of new things and they're having to interact with adults. You know, they, they don't, I don't think they ever meet children. I think there's one episode where they are, oh, I don't want to spoil it, but they are children, but they're very, very old. You know, they're not children as we would know. So yeah, they're interacting with people that are older themselves. So they're having to dig deep into, inside their personalities to cope with all this change and cope with survival. It's not like everyday life in America where, you know, we live in the Western world, a lot of us live in relative comfort. You know, we have our own houses or we rent somewhere. You know, we've got a base to live, we've got a roof over our head. We have food to eat. Not so in this case. They come in, they've got nothing. They get given this magical weapons. They magically have transformed into, they've got costumes, you know, that befits what their, what their class is. And as in, you know, ranger, acrobat and all of that. Um, but they've got nothing else. They haven't got a home. They've got no other friends. And so they're totally lost, apart from the dungeon master. And the dungeon master is their guide. And he does crop up every now and again, gives them a bit of advice, helps them out now and again. So he's like the guide through. So I guess he is maybe representing the parent in all of this to guide you through, you could say guide you through that adolescent stages. So in a way, it's a sort of coming of age story, but it's about that surviving that. So it's not only physical survival, about where do you find your food, you know, where do you find shelter, your physical condition, how do you survive, you know, in order so you don't die. But it's also how do you survive mentally? How do you change? How do you cope with all these new personalities that you're meeting with? And a parent, parents are meant to guide you through that. There is sacrifice as well that runs through this. It's another main theme that I found. Several characters, both main and supporting ones. So each episode, obviously, you've got the main protagonist of the children. They get mixed up in some sort of, you know, shenanigan, some sort of quest, some sort of venture that isn't necessarily their own, but they, they kind of get involved either by because they choose to or they're forced into it. So there's a supporting cast and they've got their motivations for what they what they're trying to achieve. And so it's not only the main characters that will sacrifice themselves in one way or another, but also the supporting cast as well. 
So normally the sacrifice is to save the group. So you would sacrifice yourself in order to save the group, you know, so the more people can survive or escape or whatever the situation may be. So there's lots of storylines like that. And it's not necessarily that they're sacrificing the, their lives. It's, you know, as in they're going to die, you know, and everyone else lives. But, that, you know, there is a bit of that as well. But it's also maybe they're sacrificing their way of life or they're sacrificing something else that's very important to them in order to further the group. So I like that mixture as well. It's not all about just sacrificing your life. And there's also the runs in... I don't think there was an episode where this didn't happen. I might be wrong. But they, the person that sacrificed themselves... They normally get rewarded in some way or another. So there's a twist. So you think, oh, no. You know, oh, no. But there's a sort of compensation going on. And I like to think that that's the universe kind of rewarding you to say, look, you, you did this. You did a good thing. We're going to reward you with this. It's not quite the same you know, as, as what you have given up and what you've sacrificed, but here's a little bit of compensation. So I think that's a really nice touch. I think that's a really lovely moral lesson that you can learn, that you know, children can learn when they're watching this and hopefully take forward into their real lives. So overall, I just adored this. I really, really did love it. It was everything that I'd hoped for. I actually remembered a lot more episodes than I thought I would. I was like, I, I remember that bit, and I remember that. And I was scared at that bit, and I was intrigued by that bit, and oh, I didn't understand that bit when I was a kid, you know. So I was really, really surprised, and I thought, God, yeah, it really did have a massive impact on me when I was a kid. I loved watching it. And so it didn't disappoint at all. The show is one of these shows that's very, very well thought out. And, and you could tell the creators really cared about what they were doing. It wasn't just, oh, you know, I'm working on a kid's show, you know. They cared about it. And I did notice in the credits that the executive producer was one of the co-creators of Dungeon Dragons. It was Guy Ga Gary Gayak, sorry. He was executive producer. Now, I don't know how much of an input he had, but I think he must have had quite a lot of input because they really captured the spirit of the game. Now, oh, bless you. And we got, oh no, it's Venger come to attack with his sneezing fits. That's just, that's just Julian, he's been bewitched. Um, so yeah, they really did capture the spirit, the spirit of the playing the game, going into that role-playing world. Now, I have only fairly recently, in the last three years, I think it was, started to play D&D. &D, and we've done a review of the starter kit of the edition five. So if, you, if you've not played D&D &D and you, this is kind of luring you in, check out our review because we go into greater detail about how D&D &D works as a role-playing game. But it really captured the spirit. And I think one of the main things was that opening sequence with them, with the normal kids in everyday clothes, in everyday America, going, look, a D&D &D ride and they get transformed. And that is what I loved as a kid. Look, I'm just an ordinary kid, nothing special about me, nothing really going on about it uh, in my life, you know, just everyday stuff. And yet my brain, I, my imagination can transport me into a fantastical world. And that's why I like creating worlds because I kind of create the rules, I can create things as quirky and as mad or whatever as interesting as I find as I like. And so it does that. You are those kids, you're the protagonists. You are fighting those monsters. You are solving those puzzles and riddles. You are helping the people that they encounter. And that is what D&D &D is all about. That's the essence of it. Now, I've not watched the other D&D &D related films that are out there, the you know, live action ones. And I think I just was all, always put off because they always get negative reviews. And so, I, because I've not watched them, I can only guess that they don't capture the spirit of what D&D really is all about. Whereas this does. The characters are so well de uh, defined and well rounded. They've each got their unique personalities, they've each got their flaws, but they've each got their, you know, they each step up now and again, they overcome their flaws. It doesn't mean they go away, but they just manage their flaws much better. And they learn from each other, they learn from the characters, the new characters that they meet, they learn from the dungeon master, obviously, and they're learning lessons. But they don't do it in a cheesy way. It seems like, um, it's just a natural way that, that, that they're learning about themselves and about life's lesson. It, it's not done in a cheesy way. So that, for me, is a big, 
big, big, big plus. You have to care about the protagonist if you're gonna, you know, get involved and want them to succeed. The storylines, storylines are great. Storylines are great, they are packed full of action, they're exciting, they're thoughtful though. It's not just action, 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 because that just gets very boring. There's action and it works because you care about the characters. There's action that serves the storylines, not the other way around. Not like, oh, this episode's flagging a bit, I don't know, what should we do, let's just attack the characters. No. I mean, there's a little bit of that in terms of random events happen, but then that's real life. You might be driving along, you might get a flat tire. That's a random event. You can't foreshadow that. Well, I guess you could do. But some things do randomly happen. And again, the Dungeon Master will do that when playing D&D. &D. They will put in a few random events just to keep it real. But, 9 times out of 10, the action is there because of the storyline, because of the characters. So it's thoughtful. The characters and the storyline work well together. It's not just thrown, you know, thrown haphazardly and hopefully a story comes out that's, that's, that's enjoyable and engaging. There is plenty of action to keep it going. There's twists, there's plot twists, there's um, devious plot twists as well. They go, oh, I didn't realise that. And as an adult, you kind of think, yeah, I kind of know most of the stuff. You know, it takes, it's, you know, the more stuff you watch and read, the harder it is to kind of be surprised. But there were a few things I thought, oh, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. And that was a really cool twist. And each character does get a focus. So, you know, one, one episode might be about one of the characters mainly, and each of those characters does get that. It varies, so there's not necessarily one main character, so I like that, again, emphasizing the teamwork. And you get to know them over the course of the 13 episodes, and, and they do learn, but, like real life, how many people just instantly change and then they keep the same, you know, that change going? No, it, you know, it takes time for change to come in. So, as I say, they really capture the spirit of it where you know, you've created your own character and then you are helping people. And what I realized is the reason why it's standalone, each episode was like a little mini quest. So the way D&D works is you might have an overall quest that's a big, long you know, saga, and your dungeon master creates that, or there's you know, pre-made ones that Wizards of the Coast who make the game, they've come up with their own you know, pre-made quests that you can go on, and they're, they're quite long, they're quite lengthy. They might, you, know, you might go on for weeks and weeks and weeks. But of course, each overall main quest, so in this case, them trying to get, you know, survive and get back to their own world, there are little quests involved. It's not just as straightforward as that. And that is what happens when you play D&D. &D. Yes, you're trying to get the overall objective, you know, it might be to kill a powerful wizard, you know, whatever. But it just, it's not just, oh yeah, and in the first session that you play, you manage to do that or at least get to the wizard, no. There's going to be, it's a saga, it's a quest. There are many multiple mini quests that you're going to have to achieve. And so each episode is that. And hopefully each episode they get closer and closer to getting home. They learn something new about themselves or about the world or how to get home. So it really is, really captures the spirit. And I think for me, that's why it is very, very well received this. It's very much loved. There are lots of messages and morals, as I say, that are in each episode, and I love that. I really realize that's what I like about stories, if there's something I learned from it. So that's why I do like, um, you know, uh, fables, mythology that teaches you about something, but not done in a cheesy, corny way. You have to earn that. It can't just be tagged in on the end, oh, what should we make this episode about? No, it has to be there from the beginning. It has to be pre-programmed, and, and, and the characters have to earn it. They can't just do random things. And that's what happens, that's what they do, and it's really nice. So you come away thinking, yep, yeah, I watched a really entertaining, thoroughly immersive you know, episode, but at the same time I kind of learned a little bit about, you know, about myself or about life. And I remember there's the storytellers, Jim Henson's the storytellers, uh, no, sorry, just the storyteller. I was gonna say my stage play then, the storyteller's apprentice, nice plug there. Um, no, I remember watching Jim Henson's The Storyteller and f thinking exactly that. I kind of learned something and, and it just simmers in the back of your mind. It kind of goes into your subconscious and it never goes away with you. And I think, I think this is a lot of watching D&D, &D, this TV series, other TV series like the Jim Henson's Storyteller, I can't think of the Dark Crystal, you know, all fantasy, I find if there's a message in there and they do it well, it really resonates, it really sinks deep. And I think maybe that's where I've learned my morals from, you know, my moral compass. 
And, but they don't do it in a cheesy, corny way. It's not just thrust in your face. And, and that's what I liked about it. So it really captures the spirit. So if you have never seen D&D and you're an adult and you think, oh, it's a kid's show. Yeah, it is a kid's show, but it, they've done it so well, I think you would enjoy it. You would definitely enjoy it if you were watching it with children, if you've got your own kids and they've never seen it and you've never seen it, or even if you've seen it, get, get this because show it to them because this is fantastic storytelling, it's fantastic characterization, and there's a few morals thrown in there for good measure as well. And if you're watching it with your kids, wow, what a great bonding experience. I watched it with my son, and he loved it, and we got, you know, it was, it was, it was a nice experience, a nice filmatic experience. If you're a kid and you're watching this review of it, maybe, maybe you're not, because, you know, I do waffle on a bit, but watch it, it's, it's brilliant, it's really, really good. If you are an adult and you have seen it already, you did watch it as a kid, and you think, well, I've seen it. Yeah, relive the nostalgia, man. If you liked it, watch it again. You won't be disappointed. And that's, I watched Hong Kong Fui. I don't know if anybody watched that when they were kids. Loved that as a kid. I watched some episodes not too long ago, about 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't realise that was going on in it. And there was a few things that I was like, hmm, that's a bit close to knuckles. And I, was, I didn't really enjoy it, it kind of let me down. And I was like, oh, that's kind of sullied my opinion of it. This, it doesn't, it doesn't let you down. It's everything that you thought it was, and maybe a little bit more. And there's that nostalgia trip going on as well. So, thoroughly recommend Dungeons and Dragons, the animated version, series one. We will be doing series two and three. Hell yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Yes, D&D &D can't recommend it highly enough. We will be reviewing series two and series three. Hopefully it didn't go downhill. Fingers crossed, we'll find out. Plus, I've now you know, whetted my appetite for actually looking at the D&D &D films, the live action ones that kind of got panned. It'd be interesting to see if they really are as bad as everybody makes out. Just remember, we have over 440 episodes now on our YouTube channel, so check them out. There's loads of stuff up there. There's something for everyone. And if you know people that love fantasy, spread the word of the imp. Until next time, remember to keep it unreal, especially if you are Tiamat the Dragon.